Breville espresso machines are widely known as some of the most popular options out there for home use. So much so that last year we made a point to buy and review every single one. Well, maybe not every one, because the touch variants were noticeably missing from that video. So today we're circling back and reviewing the Barista Touch by Breville. Is it just a Barista Express with a screen slapped on the front? Let's find out. Before we get going, I want to make it very clear this is not a sponsored video in any way. I actually got this machine loaned to me by the famous Journey. If you're not already following him on Instagram, you absolutely should be. I will also leave this machine linked down in the description below so that you can easily check your local pricing. Jumping straight into the review, let's start off with the build quality and design. This is one area that was instantly surprising for me when I first unpacked the machine. It uses the exact same form factor as the much older and less expensive Barista Express, but the touchscreen, combined with the newer matte finishes and lack of knobs and buttons, makes this machine appear so much more premium and modern when sat on your countertop. I didn't expect to like it, but I kind of did. Now, it's important to note that this is purely superficial. When it comes to an actual build quality standpoint, this is exactly the same as the Barista Express. Now, this is not necessarily a bad thing. The Barista Express is a great foundation to build off of. However, don't be expecting any extra premium finishes for your extra money. The Barista Touch has a two liter water tank, top mounted hopper, 54 millimeter portafilter, built-in tamper, hot water spout, and a large drip tray with storage in behind. The grinding is still relatively messy when grinding straight into a portafilter, just like any of the Breville machines, so I do recommend still picking up a dosing cup to make your life a whole lot easier. One notable difference with the touch is the inclusion of an automatic steam wand and temperature sensor, which we'll take a look at later on in the video. Speaking of functional differences, let's move on to the actual user experience, as this is undeniably one of the biggest differences between the touch and more analog Breville models. It's important to note that despite using the same shell as the Barista Express, the Barista Touch is completely different under the hood. Because it's a newer generation machine, it benefits from Breville's newest Thermojet heating system, which is also found on the Barista Pro. This allows the machine to reach brewing temperature in only three seconds. Yes, you heard that right, three seconds. The downside of this system is that it runs very cool, so the group head will not properly preheat the port filter by simply locking it in. You'll need to run one or two blank shots to get the metal warmed up before pulling your first espresso of the day. Moving on to the touchscreen itself, there was a lot of stuff to explore. However, I found myself easily able to navigate through the various menus and settings without feeling the need to reach for a user manual, which is always encouraging. The main screen shows a variety of drink icons, which when clicked, preload a corresponding set of drink parameters, including the grind time, shot length, milk texture, and milk temperature. Each of these icons can be customized to whatever settings you want, and you can even add additional custom recipes with their own photos and names if needed. Once a recipe is selected, the machine will prompt you through grinding, brewing, and steaming the milk, showing you live status updates as you go, and even purging the steam arm automatically once you're done using it. This workflow was quite nice and I really don't have any complaints, other than the fact that there isn't a dedicated button to purge the group head, which I feel like is a missed opportunity. Instead, you need to simply start and stop brewing to get a little bit of water through like you would on any other machine. I know, what a hardship. An equally large advantage to having the touchscreen is in situations where you want to change settings, perform cleaning cycles, or other less common tasks. There is one simple menu that easily allows you to find what you're looking for, which is way nicer than the cryptic combinations of button presses that other Breville owners might be accustomed to. Is the screen a necessity? Absolutely not. Is it nice to have? Yes. Yes, it is. Moving on to the espresso quality, the Barista Touch hit me with yet another surprise. 
Despite using the exact grind setting wheel from the Barista Express, the Touch now has 30 steps of grinding range compared to the 18 on the Express. This is a great improvement because it means you can dial in your coffee far more precisely without the risk of the setting you want falling in between two grind steps, which does happen on the lower end models. Another advantage is that this machine is brewing at a far more traditional nine bar of pressure. Now you might see it advertised as a 15 bar machine. However, not only would that be undesirable, but it is also false. 15 bars is the pump pressure. However, marketers like to cling on to that number because they think higher is always better. At the group head, the machine is providing a traditional nine bars of pressure, which is ideal for providing even and consistent extractions. The espresso quality from the Barista Touch will be on par with that from the Barista Pro, which is to say that it is very good for a consumer level machine. Yes, I would have liked to see a 58mm portafilter for a machine in this price range. However, with the current setup, you can dial in some very good shots with a little bit of practice. Steaming performance on the Barista Touch was a bit hit and miss for me. However, I think that those who are drawn to the convenience of this machine will be perfectly satisfied. Let me explain. The Barista Touch uses a Panarello style steam arm to automatically introduce air to create the exact temperature and texture you program in. And if your sole goal is to create a drink with hot foamed milk, then you will be completely happy with this system. Full stop. It does that, and it does that very well. The Thermojet heating system provides a very quick transition between brewing and steaming, and steaming speeds that are equal or even slightly faster than other products in this category. It should be noted that because the temperature sensor measures on the outside of the pitcher, it means that the actual milk temperature is around 5 degrees warmer than the displayed temperature. Not a huge deal, simply tweak the temperature to taste. My only complaint, and where you might be slightly disappointed, is if you want complete control over your milk texture for latte art. Latte art requires very fine microbubbles, and this Panarello was simply a little bit hit or miss for me. You'll always get nicely textured milk and be able to make some blobs and hearts just fine, but don't expect a masterpiece. If this is what you want, you'll be better off going with the manual steaming of the Barista Pro and taking the time to learn how to steam perfect milk. Just keep in mind that this is a lot more involved and would take a lot more practice. Hence why Breville has offered to do it for you on the Barista Touch. And as far as automatic steaming goes, it does a very good job, producing notably better results than very simple Panarellos you get on cheaper machines. At the beginning of this review, I asked, is this just a Barista Express with a screen? And the answer is no. Despite using the same shell, the Barista Touch packs in Breville's latest Thermojet technology, providing blazing fast startups, nine bar brewing, and quick steaming. For that reason, this machine is best described as a Barista Pro with a touchscreen and automatic steaming capabilities. So, if you put convenience and ease of use at the top of your list of requirements for a home espresso system, then the Barista Touch is absolutely one you should be checking out. However, if none of these features stood out as must-haves, then you'd be better off sticking with the less expensive Barista Pro. Once again, I'll have this machine as well as the Barista Pro linked down in the description below. If you've enjoyed this video, please leave us a like, and even consider subscribing if you want to see some more like it in the future. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.